really just an artifact of the fact that we are just things that proceed in the direction of the dynamic <coughs> flow. And so how so how could we perceive it moving in any other way? Sort of, you know. Is that what you mean sort of by concept of time? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, topic. I would point out that while thermodynamics, you know, maybe the direction that <coughs> that is interesting in time is determined by the changing you know, by entropy. The fact is that all of the underlying structure in thermodynamics does assume that there are some kind of rules for what can happen as you move through time in either direction. It already assumes the time variable is there. Okay. Right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not an expert on that whole so. idea. So I'm sure if you asked me a better explanation for how that works, but that was just my understanding of it. Although I have heard, this is interesting, there are ways of somehow defining away time as purely just entropy, but I think you just like come up with this dimension system where the, all the dimensions are equal to any other ones and there's somehow like interactions. I don't know, you should look this up, but somehow there's ways of like not having time at a fundamental level, okay. which is kind of weird, but yeah. Then, but you have to have some sort of Progression. That's what I'm saying. But I think they somehow yeah. treat it as a dimension equal to any of the other ones. Like not. Different. Sure. Well, I mean, you treat it as a dimension, so like and the particles right. become, in this case, pass through space instead, right? And so you can yeah. somehow use that, and somehow I don't. I mean, you should look into it, Bo. But I'm just, well, but I mean, I don't see how that's different than anything we do in relativity. Right. Yes. Yeah. So what what would happen if we didn't have a progression? Well, I mean, what would be, I mean, I mean, part of the thing is like time could stop for you, and then it would start again, and you wouldn't notice that, right? Because because the function of your brain works in such a way, right? So we don't know that maybe time did stop for me just a second ago, right? But what does it even mean for time to stop? That's a, that's even a, it's even like a I don't know. Because it depends on what time is, right? And if it happens in large enough yeah. patches in the universe, uh, like kind of a. Uh, it's gradual gradient, then like you wouldn't even notice, right? But if it were to happen to just you and not the rest of us, you yeah. would obviously notice, right? So I think right. that's what we, 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 we saw last time <laughs> how, ugly, how ugly the, the like, what was the conserved currents get if you try to do that? Trying to stop one not part of the universe. Oh yeah, yeah, so right. Going. We were trying to do that. Yes, yeah, like that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting conversation. Uh, is it constant? I mean, how much can we depend on time? Well, I mean, it's not constant. It's not constant. I, I think yeah. that's something that we sort of. No, that's something that's. Yeah. Yesterday, and it's not today, so. Well, well and, and even the, the, the rate of the time is not constant. It's dependent on your reference frame, yeah. That's a, that's a scientific fact. But I guess apart from that, if we, if we believe it to be some sort of like progression, we don't know if that progression just stops randomly, right? Like, or it slows down or speeds up because we are kind of products of time moving, right? Like we were talking about with our brains, our perception of time, sure, as well as yeah. anything embedded in time, such as instruments that we create, for example, out of matter, because they obey the same rules. So you can't really tell. But yeah, so yeah. It, it, I would say it's not constant. It's, <clears throat> it's not constant in the relativistic sense, and we also don't know in the other sense, but probably. Yeah. Because I, I hope time is moving quickly for y'all right now. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, sorry, not, I know that was a joke, but also, like, there's, there's the question of how do we perceive time versus how do oh, we... how time actually, like, moves, like, independent of us. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we've shown in psychology that, like, our perception of time is not correct, right? That it, like, sometimes right. is faster or slower than it actually is, right? So yeah. that is definitely an artifact. But, um, well, and our perception is logarithmic over our life, right? Because... I mean, when you're like 80 years old, sure. you know, 10 percent you uh, like 10 with years is like how much time you know, you've already lived. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I mean, if you're 10 years old, you know, 10 years is your entire life. But if you're 80 years old, you know, 10 years is like an eighth of, an eighth of your life. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. No, no. Because then we've got you to do our own for us. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, something to do with of like making memories as well. Because if you're doing something that you're like. The time's flying by and you're like not thinking about it too much, then like it's almost as if nothing happened. Like the time just no memories. Goodbye. 
But then if you like are doing something that's excruciating for a long time, it feels like forever and a half. Well, so I mean, yeah, it's, there's like a psychology. But there's a psychology that like those the bad memories very stick easier in your brain than good memories do. Right? Yeah. So it's kind of like. Uh, Okay, this is, I guess this is sort of getting away from maybe the original point, but also like psychology, right? Sometimes your perception of it in the moment is different from how you remember it as well, right? So, so generally sort of when you remember something, it feels, if there's more sort of events for you to sort of stick your brain onto, right? But then when it's perceiving you, if a lot of things are happening to you very fast, generally you have, you have less time to sort of stop and sort of contemplate the flow of time, so it feels like things happen faster, right? If we take the conscious observer out of it, um, I would say usually a definition physicists will use is like time is what our timekeeping instruments measure. Because <laughs> which seems like super dumb, right? So like if you think about it, it's like a clock is matter that obeys certain properties, right? And it has a certain regular thing it does, and we use that to keep track of this thing that we call time. But if that like flow of whatever that is were to stop in the middle, we wouldn't know, but the clock would also not know either, right? And so it would continue to measure time in sort of this continuous fashion. Um, and yeah, which is interesting because um, that eliminates the need to have like this perception of time because even if I'm not there, I mean, I believe that that clock would still be, you know, progressing forward. So that's kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all agree on that. <coughs> tree falls in the forest. In order to believe in physics, we have to believe in this, like that <laughs> the universe will be rules. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. Well, but if you're not there, then the simulation doesn't render anything. Right. It doesn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there are interpretations yeah. of quantum mechanics where it comes from observers. It's re well. It's you mentioned Carlo Rovelli. This is another of his big things. Is um, the relational interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's sort of one way of solving the measurement problem, which is like all sort of quantities are only defined in relationship between two objects, basically. So, yeah, I've so, that so yeah. Um, okay. the idea is it, it, it fixes a lot of the paradoxes because then there's no paradox because it wasn't really, the quantity wasn't defined until you measured it, right? It's, uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, you sort of have some of this weirdness with quantum mechanics because of um, what does it mean to measure? Bell's inequality. inequality, right? You always are going to have, you have to give up locality or or real life. No, yeah. the nobody's around to hear the tree, then it's impossible to define whether it's fallen or not until something. Yeah, happens. yeah. So maybe it, <laughs> right. So quantum mechanically, I don't know if it's fallen, right? <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. We're gonna take a dive into uh, this. Is really all about quantum mechanics. I don't know. Isn't that what quantum mechanics is? What's that? Isn't that what quantum mechanics is? Everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why <I'm> <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. So. I don't it doesn't have gravity. Though Penrose might disagree, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it thinks it's entropy, so. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So, uh, a lot of, there's some theories out there that, uh, you know, say, well, we're, we're in the river of time floating down and we're passing through these moments. The moments are still there. We've just gone through them and there's future moments waiting for us and we're floating in the current moment. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Is it a river? <laughs> I think that one of the fundamental disagreements between general relativity, which is like, you know, the space can expand and stuff, and then quantum mechanics, is that one of them has this sort of I would call it almost like a bent stage that life plays out on, right? It's like the future and the past exist as this curved space time that is already there. And like objects already exist in the future and past as like kind of this, um, you know, path that travels, or that is, it just is, right? It doesn't like change. Um, but quantum mechanics, we're talking about the measurement problem. There's kind of this thing where it seems, according to the Copenhagen interpretation at least, that like when you measure something, you're somehow changing the outcome, right, probabilistically. And like, that's kind of, I feel like those are somehow like not compatible with each other. But I don't know if we have a way of resolving that. And so that's part of the reason I don't think we can have quantum gravity yet, because I don't think we understand that well enough. But Because you look at classical mechanics, you have like, well, even like, the weird thing is though, um, it 
almost seems like the past in Israel has a knowledge of what happens in the future as well, um, like as if it already exists, but I'm not sure how to reconcile that. Although that is still probabilistic, right? It still has a measurement problem, or I don't know if you believe in that one. Although that might be like a factor what we were talking about earlier, how it's like, I mean, our reality isn't our mathematical models that we use to model reality, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think because, you know, we're not, we're doing things theoretically when we use the path in Israel, right? We already kind of know what's going to happen, and so we kind of bake that into the path in Israel. Maybe, if you know, that kind of makes sense. You just list everything that possibly could happen and figure out which one makes most sense. That's true, that's true, yeah. I mean, yeah. in a sense, you could also look at it as, I was talking to Mazer about this today, if you think of it as kind of a wave instead of a particle, it's almost like it takes all of the paths to a degree. Um, which I thought was an interesting sort of thought. Well, I mean, that's the whole point of the path and finding the path and the world. Yeah. That, uh, it, yeah, it's like it moves on every path, and but somehow those paths sort of interfere with each other, right? So it's more like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, some ways, though. Yeah. But it's interesting because there still is the ultimate I think this is the thing that's interesting to me is that there is a locality of interaction that occurs with particles, right? There's a reason like we only observe like electrons hitting other electrons in like one atom, not like this atom, right? Like we can do like experiments that show there's some sort of like the photoelectric effect is a really good example, right? There's sort of a locality of interaction, but at the same time that when particles are moving around, there's sort of a non-locality as well, because they kind of interfere everywhere, right? And that's kind of what we're talking about. So that's yeah. yeah. So we'll, uh, this is great. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll actually dive deeper into all this stuff. And um, I think uh, we can probably skip past the time network because we've kind of covered that. Um, or do you want to? They have something that they want to have there. I mean, I would say no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I un unequivocally, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've already kind of covered, you know, is it relative then, of course. Um, is time a slinky? That's the new idea. I would it's say define a slinky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what a slinky is? Yes. You guys well, I mean, I know. I, I, so <laughs> the toy, yes. I, a children's toy. I know that. I know the children's toy, but I, time is not that children's toy. <laughs> I get a feeling that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a dot slinky owned by the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. North Carolina. <laughs> Some kids are <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 They're highly good right now. So, yeah. In, in what way? Well, that's, we're going to explore that. That slinky right there? I would I would argue that that slinky right there is it's not. It's just a representation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Metaphoric. so it's a representation. Uh, so I guess my question is sort of, you'll probably get to okay. this. So, but, but like, is what is it? Model for it's a yeah, what, the model it, it somehow resembles a slinky. I guess I'm, yeah. my question would be in what way? Exactly. But maybe okay. you'll get to that. So. <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah, let's move forward and feel free to ask any question anytime, um, and we'll we'll address it. Does somebody want to give me a hand? Sure. I don't have a saw. It's so well, not gonna hurt. Just grab that end of the slinky and set it on that table right here. So you see where the slinky intersects the table at different points. Right? So that's kind of like. And if I go like this, well, this part, the slinky intersects the table mile, and the frequency is uh, closer together, higher frequency, right? Over on that end, the frequency is lower because the wavelength is longer, right? Mm -hmm. I'm on board with that. Mm -hmm. You may know where I'm going. Well, you know what this is in this. So most of our most of the theoretical models of time we will see that would be represented like this, right? But that is where my theory parts from reality. Or hopefully it's real. But, uh, that there are different frequencies. Now, this is like not in any of your textbooks, 
right? Yeah. Right. Have you ever heard of any theories like this before? I mean, general relativity says that there are waves that can propagate through space that are made of space and time. And those are gravitational waves, right? So right. I'd, I'd say it's the same as that, really. Thanks for understanding me. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't bring everybody's funky sounds. Yeah. They're kind of expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, to Ben's point, I mean, if, if what you're talking, because, and obviously you need to be in a, I guess the people who've actually studied general relativity, right? <laughs> you, you need to like be in, an <laughs> in, a, in a properly accelerating reference frame or have the proper mass energy distribution. But you can have time sort of not be, because, because one thing, like, if, if a slinky is stretched out evenly across the table, if I'm understanding the analogy you're making there, that says that sort of uh, time's flow is constant in space, if you will, you know, in sort of given a reference frame. And, but there are reference frames in which the flow of time, if they sort of that can be defined, is not constant with respect to space, right? Well, so that's the, well, well, I mean, it's really the... So, so everyone's flow of time in their own reference frame right. is always the same, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, proper time. Right, it always, time always feels the same for you, yeah. right? But, but how someone else, if I view you, right, and I look at a clock, and you get near a black hole, that clock is going to appear to move slower. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. right. So, so, so yeah, and if you saw a bunch of me's spread out across space getting closer and closer to a black hole, you would see, in a sense, you know, my, my flow of time kind of change. Yeah. You'd see the slinky kind of bunch up. Yeah. So that does kind of have a little sense. But yeah. there's also another sense. So that's that's time changing over space, which I think makes sense, right? That's kind of... But we can also reparameterize time in terms of some other parameter and say that it changes over that. And I think that's... The, Exactly. Well, or, or, or equivalent, or also, I mean, you could do a, another thing you could do is, again, say, say you're watching me, I'm near a black hole, and the black hole is has like an accretion disk or whatever, so it's sucking in mass, so it's, or wait, no, that wouldn't affect, uh, I guess what I'm saying is if somehow the, the, the gravity of the black hole is getting stronger, the relativistic effects where I am are getting bigger and bigger. But like you're staying in the same place. Over time, and it's, over, you, you, yeah. if you track time and watch my clock, you'd see it slow down, even though I'm not moving anywhere. Like moving into the center no. of yeah. So the contracting shell of matter, right? So right. The time dilation yeah. inside just gets <coughs> more and more. Well, more. Let me ask you this question. Like that, but. Um, but so every moment in time is tied to a point in space, correct? Does anybody agree with that? Oh, no. not necessarily. No, it depends on your reference frame you're observing. Is it tied to the dimension of space? Yeah, 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 so, yeah. so I mean, every. <coughs> guess, what exactly do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean by yeah. that? Well, you mean that any point in time space exists? Is that what you're saying? Um, any point in time, there is a point in space. Like, well, a, well, like I mean, part of the problem is that, that how do you define a point in time, right? That, that, I think that's sort of the, the thing with general relativity, or relativity in general, is that there's no unique way to define a direction in space time that is time, right? It, it, it's completely sort of observer dependent. Right, and so, um, so, so like Newtonian mechanics, right, time is sort of a parameter that moves at the same speed for everyone, right? And so you can do like constant time slices. And you can still do that in general relativity, in relativity, but you can also do, if I take another direction that's, that's time-like, right, so still has the right sign of the metric, right? Um, then, then I could equally pick that as I can do slices along that direction, right? And there's no an equally valid yeah. ways of choosing slices of time. Right. So let me let me put it this way. So, what were you doing yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning? Exactly eight o'clock in the morning. I was probably asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that moment in time, there was a place where you. Where I, well, yes. So, but, but, okay. But his eight o'clock actually wasn't here, so. Yeah, I guess that's kind of like. So, for an object? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the eight o'clock that, that he measures is not necessarily the eight o'clock that I measure. That's sort of the. It's close. The point. 
I guess. Pretty close. It's, it's very, very close. And, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean the, the corrections are very small. And so, so, I mean, I guess, but there is sort of a unique, you so can't. You want your own wave function? No, I mean, it doesn't have to do with the wave function. We're not talking about. Um, oh, no, no, I'm just saying the, yeah. So, so I guess. So basically, you're saying tracking where Josh goes throughout the day, he's going to be at a place at any given point in time. Well, and then the at question, point in, in, his, in, in his, his time, time sorry. Is that what you're saying? In his proper time. <laughs> you know. Yeah, in my proper time, yeah, there will also be a position that I'm at. at maybe that, maybe, that, maybe that, to that or point, or at least the way, and again, people who actually study neurology can correct me, but uh, <laughs> they talk about like world lines mm -hmm. of objects, and world lines are lines. They're, they're one-dimensional manifolds. They have a time parameter, and for any value of time along the world line, you can pick a point in space, Yeah. Uh, assuming that it's in like N, not a singularity, or an island, yeah, an right. anti-object. If, if Josh is <laughs> an anti-Josh, then yeah, yeah. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a uh, um, but but so so th so that's maybe a, a sense now that that is dependent on accepting sort of a mathematical model of the world that doesn't really get out yeah. something fundamental about it but certainly the way a lot of physics well so it does sorry go ahead well yeah, that's right it does obviously reflect certain fundamental aspects of the world that that way of describing things works you know? yeah, yeah I mean it makes accurate predictions right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so but so uh, I guess to to your point uh, David uh, it would seem that. But lots of physicists would agree that that's a good model, in a sense, for the world. Okay. What do you guys think? Do you think it is a good model for the world? I think it. I guess I don't good, know exactly what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Are we talking about the yeah, switch model? <laughs> well, so going back to the slinky, um, if I stretch that slinky out, and the frequency of time. Changes is the location change. What's it stretched out over? Yeah. Over time? Is that what you're saying? So, like, over, are you saying that over space? Okay. So if you're oh, I see. So this thing was a space-based model. So Dave, I think there might be some value in you kind of like quickly presenting. Your thesis, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then I think, and then, yeah. and then we yeah, can, we can come back talk about come back to sort of yeah because I'm not sure I understand exactly what the thesis is yeah. Yeah. with like sort of the but you may not know after <laughs> I'm done either okay but, so this is the crux of my theory um, it's kind of centered around time compression and um, dilation. Although we know time is relative, we tend to treat it as a constant um, in our thinking. I mean, do we not? Even you guys probably to some extent. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Or you're just here every day, like you know, notice relative to effect. Yeah, we, we kind of depend on it, right? Um, it is the relativity of time that becomes extremely important as we reconcile quantum phenomena with the mass of reality we occupy. And, and we have the quantum uh, phenomena, right? Can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. When you say massive, does you mean large scale or do you mean containing mass? Um, like matter? I mean the relativistic world. The oh, the like general relativity? The Newtonian world. Oh, the, so, okay, so like large, large, large scale. Large scale, scale. Yeah. Large scale. okay. The opposite of yeah. yeah. So, wave particle duality. Um, Let's just move through it. So, wave particle duality, we all understand that. Does anybody know how to understand or not? I think, I, I, I think these guys are good. I think I need to keep going. Yeah, just give me a big second. Okay, so uh, the problem with uh, wave particle duality is course, that sometimes a particle, a photon, um, looks like a wave and acts like a wave, and sometimes it looks like a particle. 
So, um, everybody familiar with the Many Worlds theory? No. Yeah. What's the Many Worlds theory say? Say, uh, I mean, it tries to answer this question, right? What does it say that is happening? It says when a choice has to be made rather than the wave function collapsing into one of those choices. In fact, both of those choices happen, but the universe does in multiple different ways. So. That's not that it splits, but it, the superposition just stays the superposition. Exactly. But now, the measurement device and your brain are entangled with the original thing in such a way that you only are able to perceive one of the other. Yep. No. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the time compression theory posits that um, we're not looking at a wave. We're not looking at probabilities of how, a possible outcome or states. We're looking at probabilities of, uh, not even probabilities, but we're looking at 